So we're going to talk about the uh, Microsoft Teams mobile experience when it comes to Teams meetings. Um, but to quickly kind of just give you an overview, um, if you have not already kind of played around with your uh, mobile application for Microsoft Teams, it really does allow you to take all of these functionalities that you have on your desktop or on your laptop or on your work machine and really have it at your fingertips, right? So especially now that we're working in a remote kind of work environment, maybe we're doing hybrid, um, even in a, under normal circumstances, right? If we are not all um, at our desks, we still want to be able to, to see our chats. We may need to just join a meeting from the car, right? A lot of us travel around for, for work. Maybe you are visiting remote sites and so on and so forth. So the Teams mobile application, I cannot emphasize enough on how valuable it is and how it just makes life so much easier. Um, I'm speaking from experience. I'm sure all of my CSMs um, that are on this call can really, uh, you know, testify to how powerful the ability to use the Microsoft Teams application is on your mobile device. Um, so when we talk about mobile device, we, you know, we do mean your, um, your, uh, it could be your mobile phone, it could be a tablet, and so on. So one of the first questions that come up, obviously, is you want to make sure you adhere to your organizational policy when it comes to using, um, you know, if they allow bringing your own device or if you have organization issued devices. And also make sure that once you download the mobile application, which is free to download both for um, Android and Apple devices, that you adhere to your organizational policy when it comes to logging in using your work credentials and multi-factor authentication and so on. But once you do that, again, you literally have the ability to do your one-on-one -on -one chat, to do your group chat, you know, to be able to attend your online meetings. Um, if you do have the voice capability enabled in Teams, which um, our technical specialist Alan will talk to us all about tomorrow, you actually almost have a phone within your phone, right? So once you download the Teams mobile application, it creates its own space within your phone. Um, and if you're using your own device, you literally have a separate phone number for your Teams device, to, for your Teams application versus your own personal number. Again, I'm not just want to highlight you may not have this functionality if you don't have what we call the Teams voice license. And of course, if you do have other applications that are integrated with your Teams platform, you are getting easy access to those applications directly from your mobile device, right? So, uh, you know, again, wanted to just highlight really quickly the functionality of the Teams mobile application, you know, is device agnostic. You can pull it up on a tablet, on an iPad, iPhone, Android, um, and so on. So just wanted to highlight that. I'm going to highlight this um, slide really quickly, and then I'm going to move into an actual demo, and I hope the demo gods are working with me. So I'm going to try to stream my um, mobile device into a meeting which is a built-in functionality you have available in Teams. But again, when we talk about transferring, you know, this powerful platform that you have to your mobile device, um, you know, this is what the screen looks like. So your left-hand navigation bar that you may have on your computer, automatically, you know, you could see those options at the bottom of your, uh, your uh, mobile app right and you have an ability to see your activity if you have your notifications you have an ability to see your chat so if you do have an unread chat you will be able to see something similar to a text message right so when you don't see your text messages you get your number notifications um you can start a new chat you can pull up your team by clicking on teams you know maybe you are a remote worker um, maybe you are you know a case worker out on um, visiting families or maybe you're part of Department of Transportation and you know you need to report something so you could just simply open up your mobile app be able to open up your team select the correct channel and be able to communicate with your team ask questions and so on 
So today we're going to actually focus more on the calendar option, right? Because that is what allows us to be able to join a meeting directly from our mobile application. So when you click on your calendar feature, um, what it will do is it will pull up your team's calendar. And always keep in mind your team's calendar is integrated with your Outlook calendar. So you'll see all of you know your calendar here and the scheduled meetings um, that are on your calendar. So you can simply click the join button to join a meeting. And you can actually even click on the schedule button to be able to you know, set up a new meeting. So again, what I want you to think about is you are moving, you might not be at your desk, but it does allow you these features. One thing I quickly want to say is one of the benefits of being able to join a meeting from your mobile device can be if you don't have a call in option to the meeting because a call in option is what we call an audio conferencing license. Having the mobile application on your phone can really be a good workaround if you're having any device issues with your computer, right? Like maybe you can't hear the, me the uh, meeting, but you can see what they're presenting. You can simply join the meeting from your mobile device and be able to hear the audio from there. Or if you actually join the meeting from your mobile device um, and let's say you're using your home Wi-Fi, if for whatever reason the Wi-Fi is interrupted, it automatically falls back on your data. So there's kind of a fluidity to joining a meeting from your phone here, for example. All right, and guys, feel free to interrupt me if there's any are any questions that are coming up on um, the Q&A. All right, so. Okay. All right, so let me just change screens here and go into my VM. Perfect. So here, um, I what I simply did is I opened up my calendar. I clicked to join a meeting that was already scheduled, and I actually invited myself um, to join this meeting. You know, my mo because I do have the Teams mobile application downloaded, so I'm going to go ahead and request to join. So now what happens is my mobile device is actually ringing so i'm going to oops let me make sure i'm sharing all right perfect so now what i did is i actually joined um this meeting from my mobile device you can see my name here um as part of the meeting attendees right now so in your mobile application, you actually have the three dots for more options. So when I click on that, it gives me an option to share. And then I'm going to go ahead and share screen. When I start broadcasting, what you will see here is going to be my actual mobile phone. Where I have joined the meeting. So on the um, slide, and let me maximize my screen here so you could be able to see better. So these are the features that are right, right here at the bottom of the screen um, that you have as meeting options. Um, the first one obviously is you can turn on your camera. So again, all of these um, clicks that I'm doing is actually on my mobile device. So I can decide to go ahead and enable my camera. I can mute and unmute myself from my mobile device. Um, I can go ahead and select to have my speaker on or turn the audio off. So if there is a reason why I'm joining on, you know, more than one computer, I can go ahead and select that option. And then when I click on more options here, um, Again, what, what you see here, uh, the top feature is not may not yet be available in the GCC tenants, but the other options that you see here, such as turn on live captioning, put me on hold, um, share is the option that I selected to be able to share my uh, phone screen with you. Um, I have a dial pad because there's a voice plan on my um, phone actually. Um, turn off incoming video and so on. So these are some of the options that you will be able to see 
on your mobile device. Now, let's say that I want to on my mobile device while I'm attending the meeting, like I can hear the audio and everything, but I want to go back and check, um, you know, maybe what is going on in my chat. So I can simply just click the back button and be able to see maybe what other meetings I have coming up, right? And you can also see right here at the bottom of my screen that I can see there are three chats. So I can simply click on that, go review my chat. You can see that I'm still here part of the meeting. And you know, I can pretty much multitask again completely on my mobile device. Um, going back to calendar, um, it does have an ability to go ahead and start what, what we call kind of an ad hoc meeting or an ability to go ahead and schedule a meeting. So Nash covered this part earlier as far as you know before the meeting what we need to do. Again, I want you to kind of visualize the multitasking capability the mobile devices forward to me. So I could schedule a meeting here um, and also be able to look at my teams, right? So maybe this is a channel meeting. So the functionalities that Jeff was showing earlier with the channel meeting is something that I can definitely advantage directly here from my mobile device. When I click the more button, is again, if you have any applications uh, that are integrated with your Microsoft Teams, this gives you easy access to those from the mobile device. So you might not see the icons that I see here. Again, this is specific to my organization, but you are able to utilize the um, kind of the functionality of the Teams container uh, directly here from the mobile device. Um, are there any questions in regards to what I'm showing? There was there one, was one. Um, that I answered. You you may just oh. want to elaborate on because I just said yes, but sure. one of the users was asking, can this be used for assistance with your phone? For example, if help desk uh, needs to see your phone and help you with something. And, of course, yes, but if you want to elaborate on that, feel free. Yeah, that's an awesome use case, right? So if you have, um, you know, you, your help desk needs to troubleshoot, they'll quickly send you either an ad hoc Teams meeting request or they can schedule a time with you when they can troubleshoot this. And you could simply, you know, join the meeting from your mobile device, click on the share. When you click on share, it does allow you to select um, you know, your phone screen and to start broadcasting. Also, another th functionality that I know you guys have is the raise hand. So if you are in a meeting and you actually raise hand, you can see how my hand is raised to ask a question. Um, one other thing I want to really quickly show you is the ability or, you know, the security of the, the Teams client, although not directly related to a meeting, is that if you actually go to, for example, a team that you belong to, um, and again, maybe we'll use our Department of Transportation example from earlier. I see a pothole or something that I need to go ahead and report. I can simply open up the, the team, right? I clicked on my teams right here at the bottom. Um, go ahead and open up the team that you belong to and open the channel that is relevant. So in this case, it will be DOT Bridge Project. And if I go to a new post, what you will see here is the ability to turn on my camera. So if I turn on my camera, don't allow for now. So if I actually turn on my camera, oh, okay. So I need to open my settings and adjust my settings, but it will allow me to actually take a picture or a video. And because you have that SharePoint backend, you don't have to worry about, you know, the size of the video if you are just, you know, using it for common use cases. But that picture or video would not be saved in your personal photo gallery outside of your Teams application. So again, that kind of speaks to the layer of protection that you have by simply using the Teams mobile application. And again, you can download it either for um, Android devices or Apple devices. For example, I have an Apple phone. I simply go to the App Store and I search for Microsoft Teams.
and I've already have it downloaded, but you would be able to find an icon that looks like this and you'll be able to um, open it and download it. So outside of the meeting functionality, which is really a huge advantage for um, your Teams mobile app, uh, you know, you have an ability to do so much more, including, you know, even open up a document that is shared in a specific um, team and updated directly from your mobile device, um, so on and so forth. Go back to my slides, make sure I've covered everything here. Yeah, so um, is there a limit to the number of photos that could be shared via Teams mobile camera? Um, I guess it really depends on your use case. Um, so if you can elaborate a little bit, is this in a team? Uh, where are you sharing, um, you know, the, the image? Are you sharing it in a meeting? Are you sharing it in a chat? So that all also depends on your back end, right? Where, is, where are those files stored? So if it is a SharePoint site that is on the back end, which is part of a team, um, you'll definitely have a larger, you know, a, a good enough space. I always say unless you actually upload Titanic like three or four times. Um, <laughs> so for normal use cases, you do have an advantage because you are using this cloud storage space, both with SharePoint and OneDrive. So for SharePoint, it depends on your organizational limitations. For OneDrive, out of the box, you get one terabyte of space per individual user. So that is a good amount of space. So hopefully that will answer your question. 